Hello, Dan. How are you, John? Where you been hiding out? Sit down. Tell me all about yourself. Well, ain't nothing much to tell, son. Been doing some repair work around the place. Kind of expected you out. Well, I was figuring on getting out tomorrow night. Thought I'd try and even up that cribbage score. <laughs> Come ahead. I've got to run over to King City tomorrow, but I'll be back for dinner. Just drawn out all my money. I'm going to restock the ranch. Now that you're a sheriff, I reckon the rustlers won't be so active. I want the old place to look tip-top before Bess gets home next year. She's all I got, John. And I'm going to see she's comfortably fixed. I understand, Dan. I'll do all I can to help. You know, I owe you a lot. You've been as close to me as my own father would have been. Shucks, son, you don't owe me nothing. It's been great to see you grow up into a real man. You don't know how proud I was when you got elected sheriff. I reckon I'll be drifting along. Well, you better not flash that roll. You might not get home. Oh, uh, I'm all right. Nobody's going to hold me up. Where's your horse? Got him tied back at the express office. Oh. Well, don't forget tomorrow night. I'll be waiting for you. <laughs> There goes old Dan. We'll wait till he's well out of town. We'll slip in the back way when Pete's alone. John. Did you recognize any of them? They were men. They came in the back way. Surprised me. Got me in the shoulder. Boys, get Pete to a doctor. I'll try and round him up. that money bag, Martin. Have me that bag.
Work your way down the creek back to town, ditch that stuff. I got a slug in arm, Joe. We'll take care of that when we get back to town. I've killed my best friend. You were only doing your duty, Higgins. Why take it so to heart? And duty makes it necessary to take the life of a man like old Dan Matthews. Well, then I'm through with duty. Well, there was positive proof that he was one of the gang. Clem here saw him tie his horse behind Wells Fargo. The evidence is too strongly against him. Circumstantial evidence has convicted many a man, Dixon. And I still believe that Dan Matthews is innocent. I'd like to see you at the office, Mr. Williams. I'll be right over, John. Well, Williams, I guess you get your old job back. Well, my eyes are not as good, and my hands are not as fast, but I'll take the job until you can get a better man. That's right, fair enough, Williams. We need a good man. Sit down, Ed. I'd like to explain something. When Dan Matthews left here, he'd just drawn all his money out of the bank. He was going to restock his ranch and get it in shape for his daughter, who's coming out this next year. Well, this money was on Dan when I found him. I wish you'd see that his daughter gets it. It's rightfully hers. I'll keep it for it, John. No one will ever know. Thanks. Been about a year since Higgins left town now. I saw him about six months ago. He was in town cashing in some nuggets. He's turned desert rats, you know. Mm, must have hit him uh, pretty hard, shooting old Dan. Never saw anything like it. He's like a dead man, walking around with the weight of the world in his heart. What about Dan's daughter? I had a letter from her a few weeks ago. Says she's figuring on coming out here soon. Huh? I think she'd be better off back east with her aunt. Same as I think John's better off out yonder. Mm-hmm. He's a strange feller, Bob. How he hates outlaws. Says they're to blame for him shooting old Dan. Mm -hmm. Johnny! And then we'll push the door. Chinda, honey, chubby chumbe. Broken leg, eh? Oh, it's got 
Well, don't try to talk, son. I'll have you in camp before night. Black Eagle! Ichimu Kechka Ochka Tulufa Yahlanus Chohoda Chinda Anni Chavik Chumbi Kohoda Amish Big storm come, tree fall, kill him all, boy, hold him light. Oh, I see. Sun go quick, you stay, we Oh. All right, Black Eagle, I don't know any place I'd rather be. Mighty nice of you to give me this ring, Black Eagle. You keep me, my people, your friend. Well, thanks. I won't forget. awfully glad to get home. You see, I'm Beth Matthews, and I own the Lazy M Ranch. There must be thousands of cattle, and at least a hundred cowboys. And just think, I'm going to be bought. Oh, look at those wildflowers.
Can you drive? The town's about three miles ahead. Just stay on this road. I don't understand. You're an outlaw or killer. And you're letting me go? Yes, and you'd better hurry. And the last I saw of him, he was standing in the middle of the road watching me drive away. Can you describe this uh, bad man? Well, I couldn't see much of his face. It was so dirty. Only a pair of steel gray eyes that seemed to look right through me. He had a heavy beard, a slouch hat, and faded overalls. He was the most horrible creature I've ever seen. And his voice, do you remember it? Well, he only spoke a few times, and I was so excited, I don't know. Well, Miss Bess, you certainly have had an experience, but you must be hungry. There's a good eating house down the street. After you've finished your meal, I'll take you out to the ranch. I've got to get my boys started after Blake. The... All right, Sherry. I'll be glad to get home. Hello, Sheriff. Kind of surprised, Jay. John, I'm sure glad to see you. I just brought Blake in. The boys are taking care of me. There's your express money. I might have known it was you. That young lady whose life was in your hands just left here. She told me everything. John, you and I are going to have a very serious talk. Sit down. John, that young lady is none other than Bess Matthews. She's coming back here shortly. I'm going to drive her out to the Lazy Inn. She thinks there's an income from the ranch. The money that we've got here will need a cool head to spend it. John, that's your job. Oh, no. I'd never get away with it. She'd know it was I well, who... Who's going to tell her? She'll find out sometime, yes. But in the meantime, let's put the old lazy end back on its feet. Just the way old Dan would like it. Well, what do you say? I'll try, Sheriff. Good. There's your room, clothes, and everything just as you left them. After you shave and clean up, no one will ever know you. Come out at the ranch tonight about oh, 8 o'clock. All right, Ed. I'll be there. You've got the finest springs, the best grazing ground in the valley. And with John Higgins as foreman, why, you'll have the old Lazy M back on its feet in six months' time. That's him now. Good evening, Sheriff. Well, hello, John. Matthews, I want you to meet my friend, John Higgins. I'm glad to know you, Mr. Higgins. Thank you. Won't you sit down? The sheriff's been telling me about your thrilling experience. Thrilling? It was terrific. That bandit was the most hideous, the most horrible creature that ever was born. You don't say. A regular bluebeard, eh? <laughs> right. That's Aunt Martha. Best cook in the country. Oh, I remember Aunt Martha. Sure you do. She just about raised you. Aunt Martha. Best Matthews. How you have grown. And you didn't forget me. Certainly not. Well, you shouldn't. I spanked you a plenty when you was a brat. <laughs> John Higgins, I might have known I'd have to cook for you. Best. You're getting the best foreman in the country, but the worst eater. He's got an appetite like a camel. <laughs> what do you mean, my appetite? It's the swell way you cook. Oh, there you go, always flattering. And what's more, he leans back and breaks every chair in the kitchen. <laughs> my goodness, you boys are sitting there without a thing to drink. 
Come on, Bess, we'll fix him some coffee. <laughs> See? Everything's working out fine. Yeah, so far. How's it all gonna end? There's the end of the south pasture, Miss Matthews. Now I guess you've seen about all the ranch. It certainly is big enough. I'll pick up a couple of boys and start repairing the fences and see if I can't develop some new water holes. You know, it's strange, but your voice keeps reminding me of... Of Mr. Well, Bluebeard? Yes. Well, I, I'm sorry, I might change it. I can talk up here like this. And <laughs> don't be silly. You know, that was the only thing about Mr. Bluebeard that was halfway human. Uh, shall we go back to the ranch? If you wish. Uh, well, it's... Hello, Bob. How's the ex-sheriff making out at Lazy M? Oh, all right, I guess. Been there three months, and he's worked out a deal with the government. Uh-huh. Want to raise horses and sell them to him. Made some dandy buys, too. And Miss Bess, uh, how does she like country and ranch life? Crazy about it. Yeah. Court, court, and Aunt Martha. Uh-huh. Well, that's fine. John, tomorrow night's Halloween. Aunt Martha says they're having the biggest dance of the year at Bolter's Barn. Let's go. I guess it has been kind of lonesome for you. Three months now, and you haven't been off the ranch. Oh, I haven't been lonesome exactly. I've enjoyed being with you, our rides and evenings for the fire. Oh, I've enjoyed them, too. It's the first time you've said so. You've always been so strange and distant. Don't you like me? Well, that's just it, Bess. I... Well, someday you're going to hate me. It's inevitable. And when that time comes, I'm leaving this part of the country for good. Now, you tell Aunt Marthy that I'm taking you two to the dance. You're as pale as a ghost. I'm all right. But Aunt Martha, John says someday I'll hate him. What's the matter with him? Why will I hate him? Now listen, honey. All men act like jackasses when they're in love. That's exactly what's the matter with John Higgins. He's head over heels in love with you. But don't worry. We'll just let matters take their own course. Like this fellow Spearshake says, all's well that ends well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, John says he's taking us to the dance tonight. Yes, I know. He told me this morning. He did? Mm-hmm. like the whole country's going to be here. Got a match, John? Yeah, I think so. Where'd you get that ring? Well, it's a gift from old Black Eagle. I thought I'd lost it. Miss Hawkins, meet Miss Matthews. I'm so glad to meet you, Miss Matthews. I must have just told you. <laughs> she sure is the belle of the ball, all right. I want you to know Mr. Dixon. How do you do? How do you do? Miss Matthews is boss of the Lazy M. Oh, it's a pleasure to know you, Miss Matthews. May I have the honor of the first dance? I'm sorry, but that's spoken for. But you may have the second. Oh, well, thank you. I'm lucky. Mm, I should <laughs> say so. I'll see you the next dance. <laughs> Just a minute, everybody. Just a minute. 
just a minute, just a minute. Now we're going to start this dance off with a nice dreamy waltz. I saved this first dance for you. Well, I hope I don't disappoint you. I'm not much of a dancer. I'm terribly happy. I'm glad. Being in a crowd must make a difference. It's not the crowd. I'm happy because I'm in your arms. It could only be like that. Mighty strange dancing with her foreman. And he's the man what killed her father. Foreman? Yes. Didn't you know it? No, that is funny. How much? Dollar a piece. Sheriff, I want to see you and John right now. John. Pete wants to talk to us a minute. Sheriff, the Martin boy just gave me this new bill. Let me see it. We've been on the lookout for these, John. That's got the same serial number. Those that were found when old Dan was killed. What do we do? Act like nothing's happened. This is the first clue we've had since the robbery. And I'll watch every move those Martins make. Yes, indeed, Miss Matthews. Your father and I were very close friends. Mr. Dixon, I've asked so many people about my father, and they've all evaded my questions. Won't you tell me how he was killed? Well, I really think you ought to know. You won't hold it against me if I tell you? Certainly not. Well, your foreman killed your father, Miss Matthews. My... You mean... Mr. Higgins killed my father? You see, he was sheriff at the time. He had the law behind him. They fought it out alone. There were no witnesses, so no one ever learned the truth about the killing. to have your wits tonight. Yeah, and a little courage. You don't need any courage for this job. Pete, the dance is all we have to do is break in and grab the money and beat it. The chief said wait till the milking contest's on, and there won't be anybody leaving. We won't be seen. Come on. one who's ever told me the truth. They've all made a fool of me. Oh, please excuse me. Left 10 to 22. 
Turn right. Now keep the Martins here until I get back. Alone. Well, I'm sorry, Bess. I can't see you right now. Well, please excuse me. I'll be back later. are you, boys? Money from the sheriff's office, Pete. Those two will soon lead me to the third party. And then I'll wring the truth out of them about old Dan. know how to begin. But when I say I know who you really are and what you are, perhaps you'll understand. Why did you wait months to wear that ring, Mr. Road Agent? And tonight, with my own eyes, I saw you rob the Wells Fargo. Followed me? I followed you. And I found out that you're not only a bandit and a robber, but a murderer as well. 
You killed my father. You can't deny it. The whole town knows it. I'm not trying to deny it, but won't you let me explain? Explain? I wouldn't believe anything you said. You've lived a lie ever since you've been here. You were right when you said I'd hate you. There aren't words vile enough to express my contempt for you. Now get out of here. I never want to see you again. Martin boys just went into Joe Dixon's place. They went in the back way. Dixon? I wonder. I tell you, Joe Higgins was the fellow that got that money away from us three months ago. He had a beard and other clothes, but I knew him by the way he rode. Well, anyhow, I cooked his goose last night. He's out of a job by now. You know, I don't see any reason why I shouldn't step in and marry the boss of the Lazy M. She's sure a swell-looking gal. <laughs> Yeah, and she's got about a thousand head of slick-looking horses in that south pasture. Oh, that is news. Making a quick turnover, we ought to get about eight or ten bucks a head. And with no stock on the ranch, the boss of the Lazy M probably will be glad to marry a well-to-do gent like myself. I'll ride over and get Brokaw. Him and his gang can help us with the drive. Yeah, that's a good idea. Dixon's leaving town. I reckon I'll just follow him. and head of horses in the south pasture of the Lazy M. All we got to do is to shoe them off down to Gomez. He'll give us eight or ten bucks a head without a squawk. Mm. When do we start? Dawn tomorrow. No one will even see us. Black Eagle, I'm in great trouble. Men come tomorrow morning at sunrise to steal all my horses. Men no steal all. Me, my people, your friend, we fight. Good. Here comes Brokaw now. Take it easy, and when you get him running, push him through. Here they come. Boy, what a surprise they're going to get.
Starting the first band out of the corral. Tell me, Martin, or I'll break every bone in your body. Who killed Dan Matthews? He's up, I'll tell. All right. Dixon and me held up the express office. You chased us and shot me off my horse. I run into the cabin. And old Dan was there. He threw down on me and made me drop the money bag. Dixon saw him through the window and killed him. Dixon? Take care of him, Sheriff. I'm heading for town. I've got to tell you, Higgins and his Indian renegade rustled your horses. Me and my friends tried to stop them, but there were too many of them. Now, use your phone. Why, certainly. No 
no answer at the sheriff's office. that gun, Dixon. I arrest you for the murder of Dan Matthews. Blackie Martin just confessed. John's been gone nearly two months now. I wonder if he'll ever come back. Why don't you ask him? There's one fellow that might be able to tell you where to find him, and that's Chief Black Eagle. Squibbs, your new foreman, can take you to him. His place over there. Say, I won't be long. She's been in there two hours already. Maybe she gonna live there. Yeah. Women are sure queer critters. Well, me hungry. Me too. Say, what's the sense in a fella starving himself to death for some locoed female? Let's get the heck out of here. <laughs> 